Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our five minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about acute otitis media, otitis media with effusion, and chronic otitis media. Today, we shall talk about a complication of otitis media. Otitis media is infection of the middle ear. And as you know, the middle ear cavity is connected to the mastoid air cells, the biggest of which is the mastoid antrum. Just like your sinuses, mastoid cells are not empty cavities, they are lined by epithelium, which can get infected. Hashtag mastoiditis. The problem is this can spread to the brain, specifically the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe, leading to encephalitis, meningitis, brain abscess, etc. Now click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. There is also another playlist called ENT, Ear, Nose, Throat. Quick review of the anatomy of the ear. We have the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The external ear is made of the ear pinna, the external auditory canal, and the eardrum or the tympanic membrane or the membrana tympanicum. After this, we have the middle ear, the famous three bony ossicles, malus, incus, tapes, or hammer, anvil, stirrup. Don't forget that the middle ear connects to your nasopharynx via the ostation tube, or the auditory tube, or the pharyngotympanic tube, or the tympanopharyngeal tube. And that's why if I have otitis media, it's probably came from an upper respiratory tract infection that has spread upwards. As for the inner ear, it is for hearing and balance. Hearing is by the cochlea and the famous organ of Corti. Balance is by the three semicircular canal, the utricle and saccule. Cranial nerve 8 is a sensory nerve we call vestibulocochlear, balance and hearing, or steatoacoustic. If you want to download my doozy handwritten notes, go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. Your nasopharynx is lined by epithelium. Auditory tube, epithelium. Middle ear is also lined by epithelium. Your sinuses, your mastoid air cells are all lined by epithelium that can get inflamed and infected. Here is your lovely middle ear cavity or tympanic cavity. In young children, the suture between the petrous part of the temporal bone and the squamous part of the temporal bone is still unossified, especially in young children, which means if they get otitis media, which is infection of the middle ear, it can spread upwards to the brain, causing encephalitis, meningitis, brain abscess. Let's look at the anterior wall of the middle ear. It's connected to the nasopharynx via the ostation tube. That's how pharyngitis can cause otitis. The tympanic cavity itself is part of the temporal bone. The posterior wall is related to the styloid process, part of the temporal bone, and the mastoid process, also part of the temporal bone. What do you call the foramen between the styloid process and the mastoid process? Um, stylomastoid foramen? Genius. What's the name of the cranial nerve that leaves in this area? It's the facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven. So if I have otitis media, one of the complications could be facial nerve paralysis, aka Bell's palsy, which will give me epsilateral paralysis of one half of my face. Moreover, behind my middle ear cavity, there is the mastoid antrum, which is the largest mastoid air cells. And we have other smaller ones. How does the middle ear communicate with the mastoid antrum? It's called the additus to the mastoid antrum, which means entry to the antrum. Entry to the mastoid entrance. That's kind of redundant. That's why you have to invent words like additus, antrum. And therefore, one of the complications of otitis media is mastoiditis. And don't forget that the mastoid part of the temporal bone is related to the sigmoid venous sinus. Can this lead to sigmoid venous sinus thrombosis? You bet. Recall that otitis media could be acute, otitis media with effusion, or chronic. The bacterial triad that causes otitis media or sinusitis is streptococcus pneumoniae, haemophilus influenzae, and moraxilla catarralis. We have talked about acute otitis media before. The key word is acute purulent discharge, bulging tympanic membrane with decreased mobility. Loss of the clear reflective cone of light on otoscopy. Management is medical, for the most part, amoxicillin or surgical, meringotomy, 
and maybe with tympanostomy tube placement. Acute otitis media can be complicated with mastoiditis. As for otitis media with effusion, the keyword is no infection, i.e. not purulent. This effusion could be serous, could be mucinous, but not purulent. No pus. And on otoscopy, you'll see air fluid levels for the effusions. Here is the normal tympanic membrane. Here is acute otitis media, bulging tympanic membrane disappearance of the cone of light. And here is otitis media with effusion. You see tons of effusion and air fluid levels. Chronic suppurative otitis media can also be complicated with mastoiditis. Otitis media can spread extracranially and intracranially. Mastoiditis, what happened? I had otitis media, then the infection spread via the editors to the mastoid antrum into the mastoid air cells. Organisms, bacterial, the most important, Streptococcus pneumoniae. Keyword is purulent discharge. That's why in the management we'll talk about surgical drainage of that discharge. The patient presents with history of otitis media and pain behind the ear or pain of the ear, otalgia. Oto means ear, alga means pain. Do you remember analgesics? No pain. An means no, algesa means pain. Physical exam, vital signs, there is fever. By inspection, there is protrusion of the ear pinna. Why? Because the mastoid inflammation is pushing the ear pinna forwards. Because remember, it's itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functual, let's say. By palpation, there is tenderness over the mastoid process just behind the ear. Diagnosis is made clinically based on the history and the physical exam. CT scan and MRI will help show a pacification of the mastoid cells, confirming the diagnosis of mastoiditis. Management could be medical or surgical. Medical. This is a very serious condition that can spread to the brain. So please do not say, oh, just supportive care. Shut up. Watch and wait. Shut up. Oral antibiotics also shut up. We need intravenous antibiotics because this is getting serious. Surgical drainage via mastoidectomy or tympanostomy. Complications of mastoiditis, same. Spread of infection to the facial nerve at the stylomastoid foramen causing epsilateral Bell's palsy. Mastoiditis, autogenic abscess or even cerebral abscess. Cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, particularly of the sigmoid venous sinus meningitis, encephalitis, etc. Hearing loss can happen and it's usually conductive, but if it spreads to the inner ear, then it becomes sensory neural hearing loss. Quiz time! Can you name three muscles that insert to or are attached to your mastoid process, which is part of your temporal bone? Let me know the answer in the comment section. If you want to learn more about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications, their mechanisms of actions, indications, contraindications, etc., download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about other emergency medicine topics, download my emergency medicine High yields course. And to learn about chorioamnionitis, endometritis, vaginitis, mastitis, and others, download my OBGYN high yields course, medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 300 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.